Hey y'all, it's Brandon with Voodoo Forge. Now today, I am going to be taking a Harbor Freight Pulusky. Now what a Pulusky is, is it is a uh, combination axe and like grubbing hoe. And these were developed uh, by a guy, uh, Ed, I think, Pulusky over 100 years ago for the wildland firefighters out west. They are really hard to get around here. So I got a Harbor Freight one and I'm gonna try to fancy it. So let's see if we can polish this turd. And this one came from Harbor Fraught. So, you know, it was about 30 bucks. And I was like, eh, I'll get that. And I'll try it. And I'm probably gonna change some things about it. But I'll tell you a couple of things. It's made in India. It is, uh, what does it say here? Three and three quarter pound carbon steel head. So it's saying it's carbon steel, so we're gonna check to see exactly how hard it is in a minute. But one thing I do wanna show you, this is my fire ax. And you can see immediately the, the bit on this one is nowhere near as big as the one on the fire ax. The heft is good. I hate fiberglass handles, but we are gonna probably completely reconfigure this thing. So let's get on. Well, it says it is high carbon steel. It looks like it was probably drop forged. What we'll do is take a center punch. You know, that didn't, uh, it flipped off. It's got like almost a, a, a powder coating on it. And it flipped some of that off, but it didn't really dimple. The steel, so that seems good there. Let's check up here. Okay, that put a little dimple in there. So this may actually be hardened and tempered. Okay, this is... Oh! This seems like it might be pretty hard. I don't need a lot of digging done right now, but I'm just going to see how this thing does. Pulling out some pretty good chunks. Cutting right through those roots. Okay, so this edge right here didn't deform any, um, but it's just, I don't like that angle. Now this edge right here is terrible. That's just too steep, which I realize this is, you know, mostly for rooting or for, uh, digging with but it's gonna bounce right off of this yep <laughs> well here's what we've got so far uh it does seem to be hardened but this edge geometry is terrible it is back here too uh and this fiberglass handle i don't really do fiberglass handles so that's got to go Maybe the port band is going to be the best for this. Now there's all kinds of tricks for getting this out. There's drilling holes and chemicals and whatnot. But since we're probably going to re-harden and temper this, I think I know an easy way. All right. Looks like a good spot. brought it back up here to the shop and it is still hot and this is what I've gotten out that's what the glue has become it is my fondest desire to get this cleaned out so that I can anneal this thing overnight well that appears to be cleaned out Like a 
body. It's not really big enough. But I think it'll be good enough. This is a good hickory handle, but like most modern axe handles and hammer handles, it's just bulky. So what we want to do, or what I want to do, is trim it down and make it an octagon instead of an oval. It gives me a little better purchase on it. Now to start this, I'll take a rasp and start working it down. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay, we'll do this for a minute. We'll take a break. Yeah, we'll take a break. I don't really know of a fast way to do this. So if you don't have patience, you might not want to start. Once you've got the flat, you're gonna put it in a vise and you're gonna start working, you know, 90 degrees to what you just did. And go easy on this because it's real easy to take off too much and get it out of whack. See the dark from the lacquer and where it's starting to dissipate. Okay, so I've got it pretty much where I want it, but it's a little too rough from the rasp. So I'm just gonna take a orbital sander. This thing has been annealed. And what I'm going to try and do with it is work on this edge geometry. I don't know. The angle. This is, this is terrible. This is terrible. Uh, and this, you know, could use a little work. You know, you're not you're just, I plan on using this for chopping roots and stuff. So it doesn't have to be like a, a felling axe and, and an adze, but it's just the way it is, it's, it's terrible. Well, this is the side that I have ground so far. Got to do this one next. She's evened up and it is not, I'm trying to look down in here. Yeah, it looks good. She's evened up. It is not a razor edge, but it is uh, pretty good. And I'll, I'll probably hone it once I've hardened and tempered it. But now, time to get to work on this hoe. That looks a whole lot better and you know, you don't need to have a, a hoe head razor sharp for it to do its job, but that's a whole lot sharper. There was actually a big flat spot um, along the, the top here and uh, we got rid of, we got rid of that. So eh, it should be better. Gonna give this thing a once over with the wire wheel. And do a little bit more cleanup with a die grinder. Here's the plan. We're gonna heat this one side at a time to non-magnetic. 
I believe there is enough material here that I can harden and temper each side at the same time. We want the uh, eye, of course, to remain normalized, so it's not getting it warm a couple of times isn't going to make a big deal. So we're going to start with, actually we'll start with the hoe end because it is the at least critical, I guess. We're going to heat it to non-magnetic, which we will check with the magnet of doom here. Quench just the, the cutting edge, and then we're going to let the heat that's built up in, the, in this part, that's still built up in this part of the head, um, come in, and we're going to temper this to a, um, a blue or uh, maybe a purple uh, temper if we can get it even. Now, if I can't get it even, I'm gonna have to come up with another plan. So, but the goal is to get it evenly tempered there. Uh, then we'll heat up the ax head side and same thing, non-magnetic, quench it, let the heat run. And we'll of course be checking the temperature as we go so that we don't harden too much when we quench it we harden the bit the part we've quenched so we're trying to soften it now with the heat that is collected in the head of the uh, axe here and normally we do that by watching the colors run and different colors it's kind of a generalization but they generally get you to a different level of hard And the light in the shop here, I'm having a heck of a time seeing them go. I think they're right there, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and quench this and stop that. Yeah, we're going to stop that changing. We're just on the edge. And what that does is that stops it softening because we've hardened it by quenching it and then we've let some heat run back into it to soften it. Thing is well below critical temperature so we're gonna let that sit and cool down cool enough where I can touch it and then we'll give it the old file test and center punch test and see if we hardened it. See if we hardened her. Oh God, no. That file digs right in. Yep, it's not hard either. We are in the weird area of needing to harden this cutting edge and this cutting edge while keeping the middle soft. So 
because it's clearly made out of the same steel. You know, there's not forge welded high carbon bits in there. So we are going to heat the edges and quench them, but quench them all the way, not maintain any heat in the middle. And then we'll temper back with a torch. You know, see what, see what happens there. So more hardening. Okay, non-magnetic. And we're just going to quench her all the way. All the way down in there. So now, all of that steel that was non-magnetic should be hard. If it's hardenable. Sorry, but somehow I managed to turn the camera off before I quenched the hoe. Just so everybody understands the next step. We're gonna let this cool to the touch. Then I'm gonna clean the oil off of it. Then I'm gonna polish the edges. And then I'm gonna heat this area back here with a torch until I get my colors to run on this, like I was talking about before. Hopefully I can find a way to do this where you can see it better. Then I'm gonna quench that to stop the tempering process there. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to the back. Now, I know some people will be thinking, Brandon, why don't you just temper it in the oven? Well, that's a lot easier to do with known steels. And this is an unknown steel. I know they say it's a high carbon steel on the handle, but I don't think anybody really buys tools from Harbor Freight because of the quality. Moment of truth. See. Okay, that did not dig in nearly as well as it did before. So I think we've got it hardened. I mean, it's digging in a little bit, but it is nothing like it was the first time. tell if it's showing up on camera. Got a nice blue at the edge, so quench it, that'll stop the tempering process. Off, you can see the blue color I'm talking about with the temper in here. So that is not too hard and not too soft, and that's what you want. So that's where we're going. You can see again on the hose side, the blue. So, there we are. Now we're gonna hang it, hang it. Hanging it is putting it on the handle. I'm gonna put a pretty thick coat of uh, boiled linseed oil on here. Put it in here. Do that went in way too easy. And to drive this on here, hit the handle down like that and drives it in. I don't normally do this, but since this uh, handle is so proud, sticking out so far, I'm gonna cut some of it off here before I put a wedge in it. I'm gonna be honest, this handle's seeming like it is a little small. It's kind of scary. There we go. 
I put a pretty heavy go of uh, boiled linseed oil on the wedge. Okay, yeah. I ended up filling that up. Okay, it's not perfect. I don't normally use these steel wedges. Something about this tool is telling me to. Got that, that looks terrible. Now it's just a matter of applying boiled linseed oil to the handle. And uh, you know, this will take a week to get it soaked where you want it. Or better. Well, I'm down here at the corner of our property where we've got a bunch of Callaway pears we're trying to get rid of. So I'm going to see how she does. I'll tell you right now, I don't like the weight of it. Yeah, when I'm uh, coming to throw the bottom of my chip out, the weight of it's like dragging it. So I'm getting, I'm doing good up top. Down here, not so much. See how the grubbing hoe works. Well, the cutting edge on the bit held up real well, and it cut good. The only problem I had, and I would say this is a problem with all Poluskis, not just this one, is the way it was weighted. It's just, it's funny. It's not like a double bit. It's not like a single bit. It just seems like the, the, the weight of the hoe on the back just kind of throws me. Now, the hoe end did not hold up as well. It curled, and I mean, really, that's the, the nature of a digging tool. But I don't ever see me using this as a, uh, you know, something to chop wood with. This is gonna be something that goes in the truck, maybe I'll use it camping. Um, so, I don't know. Eh? Well, my final conclusion on this is I like it better than when it uh, came from the store, but I don't think I like the general feel of this as a woodworking tool. It's great for a digging tool, and that is what this will remain. But, uh, and I don't know, it could be the weight of all of them. I don't have any experience with these things because we just don't have them around. So, I don't, and also, if this ended up being more uh, work than I thought it was going to be because the uh, hardening it was a little more difficult than I thought it was going to be. So, honestly, it might have been worth it for me to spend a hundred bucks and, uh, and get... A better one from the get-go that I didn't have to fool with but it is doable what's your what's your thoughts did uh, did we polish this turd is this uh, is this something you want to try I wouldn't I wouldn't do it again <laughs> anyway uh, if y'all have any questions or comments what do you think the best Pulaski is leave it down below and uh, y'all behave yourselves